This is a huge day. We're back in Mooresville, North Carolina. Jeff Perico, myself. Jeff works for Manic Clutches. We have run his clutch in last week since 2018. Quite a while. Quite yeah. a while. Yeah. And finally, it started to slip. Not totally unexpected, but today we're going to rip the trans out of the car, assess what's going on, try to figure out why it's slipping, and then replace it with all new parts. But the key here is my old stuff, totally rebuildable. You can take the three discs, the hat, the drive blocks, all of it, even the flywheel, back to his shop, put new clutch material on all those discs, and then I can have a spare. Exactly. And that's what we like to do. We always like to have a backup because stuff happens. Stuff I mean, happens. Clutches fail, yeah. make more power we intend, stuff happens. So having yeah. a backup and being able to just slap it together and go, it's always kind of a nice uh, nice thing to have. So yeah, we'll get that done for you here in a bit. See what's going on under here. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, kind of curious to see what we find. Yeah, today we're gonna do the work inside of Customs by Biggin, which is caddy quarter from Pete Harrell's HED Dino, which is where we kind of smoked the clutch the last time. And we're going to do a bunch of work here. We're going to R&R &R the clutch, and then before it goes back from the dyno, the guys are going to take it and drive it, put about 100 miles on it to break that clutch in. Uh, hopefully, we're going to narrow the rear end because we had a huge problem with the tires contacting the quarter panels the last time we were on the dyno. Got another problem here. We fix our electrical problem, car is running better, tire is rubbing the quarter panel right here. I can't exactly get another set of wheels that are going to work for this deal, and I have all the room in the world to move the wheels inboard. So, narrow the rear end and then back on the dyno to find out did the tire sitting the quarter panel and the clutch slipping give us those numbers that we weren't exactly excited about. If you remember, we only made 950 of the tires last time, which yeah, that sounds great, except the car's made more before. Yeah, I think there's definitely more in it. Um, yeah, it's weird. I'm excited to see what's going on. Just, uh, yeah, help you out. We'll get you to the goal. Yeah. All right, we're gonna put the car in the air, and then we'll get to work. Okay, so here's the deal. We have switched from a GeForce GF5R transmission, five speed, to a Tremec T56 that was gone through and built by GeForce. This is a longer transmission. And the issue is, in order to get it out of the car, you either have to tilt the engine down, which requires removing the headers and disassembling a bunch of other stuff, or I need to cut my floor backwards and my seat mount and my center console. So that's what we're gonna do. I'm going to remove the console and then we're going to cut this front bar for the seat mount and deal with the repercussions of that later. But in the meantime, we could at least get the transmission up. And that'll make the car more serviceable because now that it has a mid plate in it, Not nice, just huh? leave the motor there. Just you know? leave the motor. Just leave the motor. Stop messing with the motor. And then the next step is you put the trans on the rails like the top fuel cars and just slide it back and slide it in. Well, my hope is that it doesn't always have to come out. <laughs> yeah, you know? no kidding. Like, <laughs> Only you had some clutch guy that would figure that out. Right. In your defense, that clutch has been in there a long time. Yeah, man, she did really well. And I probably didn't break it in like you wanted me to. Ah, you listen. <laughs> you know, we're almost friends at this point, so it's. it's oh, cool. we're friendly. Oh, wow, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm gonna write that down. I'm gonna, hold on, let me text my wife. Turn yeah. the video back on, see the video. I'm not even mad that the C10 clutch broke again. <laughs> Made it through the trip. Made it through the you, trip. You and you did warn me when we reused the flywheel that it was gonna I was work. Afraid it was be a little, a little choppy, it's but be a little... you said it didn't drive bad though. Um, it didn't. It really didn't. That's why I was floored when it stopped working. Oh, it stopped working. Oh, I didn't even get that update. Yeah. Oh, so, Jesus. so it came off the transport truck. I drove it into the shop like thirty yards. Oh, this is sound familiar. Maybe and then I works. went back out a week later. And when you let the clutch out, it would go into gear, but the truck would barely move. And I revved it and it would barely move. Oh, and that's weird. Tried several gears, it just barely There's moves. Nothing. There's just nothing. And finally now from driving it in and out of the shop twice, mm -hmm. 
there's there's no grab. You can fire it up, put it in gear, rev it. It does nothing. Oh, um, what the hell? Yeah, I, I'm. Huh. Okay. Well, maybe we won't be giving away that other clip. Maybe we're gonna hang on to that for a. Oh, huh. I, didn't, I didn't even think about that. That's a good point. Yeah, no, that's fine. Okay, so as soon as we cut this, we can get it out. All right, here we go. This is the part where my seat falls down. Right, I was gonna say how much structure is on that. <laughs> well, it is holding the seat up. Sorry, how about it doesn't have far to go. Yeah. So. Bingo. Sweet. Now our trance can come out. There we go. Uh -huh. and if you want to slide that back, I'll keep the throw out bearing from going all the way with it. No more. There we go. Let me have to knock that shifter off of there to put it back in. We're out of the clutch. Uh, go up just a hair to get the, to get the throw out bearing off. Okay. Can we go backwards? No. Nope. Good. Yep. I think so. Hope so. It can probably stand since we cut it to maybe go a little more. Yeah. Okay. Cool. What up? Yeah. Okay. okay, trans is out. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Can't go hurt me now. Next step is to pull the bell housing and Wait. then the pressure plate and then the clutch discs. We don't roll it too far because one of those wheels has a nice big old flat spot. Ah. So, so do my wheels. <laughs> it's not a rail car. Okay. What do you see? Just checking out your spine, but I think everything's okay. Checking out your spine. Nothing's, yeah. Not being personal, you know. What did we say earlier? We're all friends. It's all good. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> we're all friends till we're not. Well, we're all friends. <laughs> yeah. All right. Uh, we need a 516th Allen to get these <laughs> top bolts out. The block one, I don't know if you've ever tried to buy a dipstick for a Hemi engine block. Like, none of them fit. Right. And this pan had a provision, so. Oh, look at there. Okay. You know what's strange about this is wow. when I, um, yeah, I when Newburn put the shifter in backwards. Throw something longer on there? Come on, I went yeah, too long. I can get it right here. Three times in a row, it never made a noise. It just shook in fourth gear, and I was like, that's weird. And I pulled off at the top of the track, and it idled really high, but it never made a noise. So really? I shut it off, went back to the pit, and fired it up. No noise, just idling real high. I crawled under it, and the pan was dented. That's the only reason I knew a rod was broke. <laughs> it didn't make any noises. So either our tires rubbed enough and our clutch slipped enough that this made power, and we just couldn't tell, or these headers are too big. That's what I think. I'm hoping the tires were rubbing really bad and that clutch was slipping. That's what I'm hoping for. Yeah. Because if this works the way I think it should be working, we'll try that other throttle body that didn't make any power the last time. Because maybe now these are so big that that's the restriction. You know? So when it's on the ground, these are like this. Like, the car is level now. It might even be nose down at this point. Like, which is why, like, when the tires were rubbing, I didn't want to lift the back of the car. Because it was, it wouldn't fit the rules at Drag Week and it would look weird. Um, but yeah, like, I guess we just cut it off, flip flop the mounts, and it wouldn't be that big of a deal. All right, Bob Ross of Clutches is in the house. Oh, I, forgot, the I forgot my wig. Yeah, every time I have a clutch problem, I call. I called Jeff. It's usually not every, his. Every time you have it. Man, that's, that almost hurts my feelings. Oh, it's usually not your fault. It's usually ah, mine. Okay, okay. See, and I would have thought the fingers would be sticking out. More. I definitely thought the fingers would have been higher. Let me grab ye old measuring stick. Let's see what we got here. So for those of you at home, this clutch has been in this car since 2018. Really, the only time it's been out was when I switched from the G-Force GF5R, which had an 18-spline big Mopar input shaft. When we put the T56 in, it went to a 26-spline. So I sent this whole thing back to Jeff. He put a new hub in it so that the clutch disc had the right spine count. But it's the same three-disc inch and iron mantic clutch that went through Drag Week 2018, 2019, one attempt at Rocky Mountain Race Week, another attempt at Drag Week 2022, and uh, yeah. It's probably got two or 3,000 street miles. 
Right on. Go for it. Nice, easy street miles. Of course. Oh, definitely easy. She's a, she's a pooch. This is a street car. Cruises. I mean, now that you took your cup holder out of there. I'm not saying it was doing trailer burnouts or... No, no, never, never. No, that's, uh, shoot, that's pretty good. <laughs> so we took it apart, you're saying it's going to inspect? Well, the fingers are in spec. Um, it made a lot of sparks. Yeah, that concerns me because we don't see anything on the outside that would have been hitting, sparking. Let's take a quick peek on the side here. The general consensus at the conclusion of the chassis dyno session was that it was slipping. Because we kept putting time into the motor and it wouldn't make any more power. It making more power. But it made more sparks. Oh, well. Now let's see here. I'm just kind of looking at the side here. I'm thinking we're going to maybe see that this flywheel side disc is maybe out of friction material. Ah. These others, just looking at the side, looks like they might still have a little bit of meat to them. So the one closest to the flywheel you're saying is probably thin. That's what I'm thinking, but I tell you what we can do. Let's play a little game of Make Jeff a Liar by looking at the new clutch, and we can take a peek at the side of it, and let's see if we can see a little difference. All right. But that's what I'm kind of thinking. Gotta show me a little light over here and we'll give the folks at home a little... You like it? A little... You got it. All right, let's go look at the new clutch. Let's look at the new Thank you. Okay, so this is what a new one looks like. Oh, and this one's studded. That's way better. Yeah. The other one's a kind of a pain in the ass to assemble. Yeah, I'll show you a little trick to it if we have to use them, but it, it kind of looks like we got a little bit more meat in there. That does look thicker. So I'm kind of thinking that's what... All right. I'm thinking that might be the culprit, I'm thinking. But let's not get cover off of there. And we'll see what we got. All right. I do now. All right. There we go. These are the drive blocks. Oops, these are the drive blocks. Machining bolts. I believe that would be Los Drive Blocos. Los. Our Spanish speaking fans. Yes. To be clear, I speak no Spanish. Uh, El Nino. It's El Spanish for the Nino. The Nino. I barely speak English. Anybody paid attention to our last video? Mm, there's our billet hat. Let's see what we got here. Let's. Okay. Is anything interfering here? A couple other drive blocks out of the way. So, both, so far, so good. Nothing that should make sparks. There's a lot of material on this one. A lot of material on this one. Let's see. So, the mark, so let's look at the markings. Really. Yeah. Tell me what you think about what you're seeing there. Oh, I mean, that's, that's much of nothing. I mean, that's... That's pretty normal. You're always going to get a little bit of um, hot spots, and everybody gets nervous about it. But it's it's kind of how it works. Okay. Um, so I'm not too worried about that. Uh, she's got a little bit of meat on it there. So this disc is a quarter inch thick, but how much of it is actually usable? These are pretty good. You can take them down almost down to the actual metal before they start losing their coefficient of friction. And when does that happen? Like, if this is a quarter inch thick, how, how um, thin do these work? I'd have to double check and measure the actual plate thickness. Um, I just don't remember, but I'll tell you what we can do. Let's... That plate thickness should be the same as in the center here. So I don't know if we can sneak this in. Ah, not quite. If I can get a measurement of this, we'll know because you can kind of see the friction material is bonded right to this plate here. So it's not 100% friction material. It's, um, I got an idea. Let's use, we'll use a drive block. We'll go like this. And this will give us a pretty. So the thickness, it's not 100% friction material. The friction material is bonded to correct. this steel. Friction material is bonded to this piece of steel right here. And it's 
figure 170. It's probably 3 16ths that gets kind of flattened out. So yeah. So yeah, you can usually get these down, get these down pretty far before they start causing any issue or giving up the ghost. Mm -hmm. so I'm gonna put that back. Pretty, pretty even wear on that one too. It's pretty flat. I certainly wouldn't shake too much of a stick at that. I don't see that any rivets were hitting anywhere. Like we got it wore down too far to where these were clipping. Okay. Gotta find something that was making the sparks here. Hmm, that's a little funkier. Yeah. A little more wear on the inside than the outside. And you can see it here on the disc. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Even though... So like the wear pattern of this is probably an inch wide, but over here it's like three quarters. Of yeah. An inch. What's going on there? And it definitely like you can see here like. You can see it like almost rest of it over it. Mm-hmm. It's not even it's not even hitting there, and those are our grind marks too. And it was kind of wearing there. So that could be our slippage. So that we're could, not even, could we're be. We're not using all the disc we have. Right. Right. And. We're using the inside part of it where we have less leverage than if we we're using the outside part of it. Uh -huh. So that could Smoking be. Smoking gun. <laughs> well, maybe. We still got some friction material here too. A little more than I initially thought. Which is good, but. I'm gonna say this is the only anomaly we have is this one yeah. right here. Yeah. Warp disc or this thing's not flat or um I don't know, to be honest with you. Because this guy looks pretty Ah, uh, he may has a little warp to him. Yeah. Yeah, he's got some warp to him. Yeah, it looks like it's touching Mm-hmm. It's, a, it's, it's touching, touching the outside, but, but it's not the inside. on the inside. Which is even more interesting. Yeah, that's backwards. Inside, yeah, it's back from what you think. That's kind of weird. That's really weird. Hmm. Let's take a look at that flywheel real quick. All right, we have inspected the old clutch. There's really nothing glaringly wrong with it, but it did look like the disc closest to the flywheel was not applying even pressure from here to here. Uh, on the pressure plate side, it was only using like an inch of the material. So I'm not sure what that's all about, but we're gonna pull this off and see if our new flywheel will work. And then we'll install our new clutch. Another change we're making is we're going from a steel flywheel to an aluminum one with a pressed on ring gear. And I've never driven anything with aluminum flywheel. So this will be interesting. Guessing it's gonna rev quicker? Yeah, that's the plan. Anytime you can take uh, rotational mass off the back of the engine, mm -hmm. tack up quicker, let you put more power to the ground. Um, and I think if you're having a little bit of traction issues before, having a little less momentum here should let you tune that and you'll be able to hammer on it a little more further down the track once you are moving. So that's kind of kind of why we do that. Mm -hmm. Do this a lot in like road race cars because you're always looking to, to tack up quick both on the up and the down, especially for like rev matching. So yeah, we'll see what she does. My car has gotten heavier over the last six months, so any any place we can lose weight, any weight savings I'm is down. appreciated. First thing TJ asked was, <laughs> "Is that gear pressed on?" And Jeff said, "Yes, it is, but it also has these welded-in retainers that go into a machine slot. That's great because a while ago we were here changing starters. I believe we MIG welded a starter, trying to figure out oh, wow. why the engine. We overnighted starters, we changed batteries, and then." Yeah, and then finally somebody bumped the motor over when I was under the car, and I could see that the center of this moved, and the ring gear did not. It did not. Yeah. That was when we went, oh. And then uh, I believe Big and welded it together, because it was steel, on steel. And then Pete went up there and balanced it. And then we went racing. I think we won Drag Week that year. I think that was that year. That was that year, wasn't it? It was, yeah. Ah, so we just need more problems. More problems equals better results. That's the key to our success. 
You want to just death weld these sure. right on here? Yeah, I had questions about these. I've never seen these on a clutch before. Yeah, so that's so that we don't damage the cover when we test assemble it. Totally not meant for use uh, at all, ever. Oh, so <laughs> you can use the flats. So the people at home aren't going to get these. In no, 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 no. Unless if we build you something custom, like a lot of my drift customers, we'll build a custom centered iron like this. Uh, but we just use that nylon just to kind of try to protect this here, even though probably clutch guys scratch the cover. That, sorry, Mike. Take it out of my allowance there. Wow. Um, you guys can totally use the flats if you want. That's perfectly fine. And then you guys can also see our, our wave washers that were in there before. Um, they're all they're flat, so we'll replace these. These are kind of a one one time use only kind of deal. So but yeah, go ahead and pull that nylon right out. I usually treat a new clutch like a new helmet. I just throw it on the ground before just, I ever yeah just get, <laughs> before get I ever out. use it. Yeah, go ahead and scratch it. Get go ahead and scratch it. Get over with. Yeah. I sat right there. <laughs> I know you don't have to be so careful with it. Definitely not zooming in on the scratch you put in my new book. <laughs> Definitely not. <laughs> Thanks, buddy. Oh, you one. Yep. Steel mm. impregnated in front of us. Look at that. Yeah, that's pretty, pretty nice. Wow. So that's what they're supposed to look like. That's, that's what they look like. But even, you know, you take a look at it. I mean, the other discs, they hadn't lost a lot of material. Mm -hmm. So the other ones look like they're wider in diameter too. Look how much gap we have now. Yeah, I'm wondering. Maybe the sparks and are from the disc hitting the springs. That's kind of what I'm thinking. I didn't really see anything in there that would make me think otherwise, um, but it is possible. I mean, we had to wait a long time to get our next set of discs. So it could have been a supply chain thing. Maybe those discs just had a little too much OD on them. So, but I'd have thought my drunken self would have caught that when we put it together, but well, <laughs> stranger things, more <laughs> sober people. So. And all credit to my shot girl for the neat writing. I, I can't write that neat. So, yeah. We knew it was gonna be on camera. Let's make it look good. Does so, it matter initially that you have flywheel side? Or is that just so like, once it, if it goes back together the same way, it comes apart? I'll make sure it goes back together the yeah, same so, way. So like now I- Yeah, cause the offset is, of the disc oh, is awesome. different. Yeah. Yup. And you guys can see we smash these springs oh. so we don't have Interference. Yeah. And I can tell you from personal experience what happens <laughs> when you install one of the three discs backwards. <laughs> yeah. She don't go in gear. <laughs> she don't work so well. And then you find yourself in a Cabela's parking lot at <laughs> two in the morning <laughs> with the sprinklers hosing you down under the car as you pull the trans. Sounds oddly Again. specific. Again. <laughs> oddly specific. That's what happens. Is that how that went? Yeah. yeah. Is, that, is that what happened? After the triumph of rebuilding the Hemi on a picnic table. We had to pull the trans for a second time at like two in the morning in a Cabela's parking lot. I'm and, so sorry. And the sprinklers came on and hit us and everybody was mad at me because I'm the one that put the disc in backwards. You didn't sell that as a free shower? I mean, that's, yeah. could I mean, be very that's, refreshing that's on a day like that. I, mean, I was not bummed about it because I was very smelly at that point. <laughs> I felt better after the sprinklers hit me. But it made it a lot harder to hold the transmission. And it probably got a little slippery. Yeah. It probably got a little slippery. Didn't want you get too much of a big head like after rebuilding building in a parking lot. I had to take it back down a notch. <laughs> yes. Don't, don't get too excited. It worked. <laughs> it totally worked. So what was so funny is I almost made a cameo in that video because I think when that happened, I was actually... I think I called you. <laughs> yeah, you did. No, you totally did. I was I like, I don't know what's going on, dude. <laughs> I'm going to gear. You hit your tears well. This um, is crap. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the, the phone call started with, do you have something that will work? I think that was the... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> All I did was change a motor. I don't understand what's wrong with your clutch. What's wrong with your POS clutch? Yeah, that's, that's about par for the course. <laughs> no, we were at the Mopar Nats, I think, when that happened. Yep. And uh, the show was about done, and a couple of my buddies were like, bro, bro, we should just run up there and help them. Like, well, it's... You should have. It's about three hours away. Yeah. So we, too, could have partaken in the uh, yeah. you could have a shower. Cabela's shower. It was great, especially when they threw us out and we weren't, we, and we weren't done. <laughs> Fit check. Mm. Oh, yeah, that's close. That's snug. <laughs> Yeah, buddy. <laughs>
There might be some sparks, but it won't be from the clutch. <laughs> clutch bolts, but... All right, so right now we are measuring the distance from the flange of our transmission to the face of our hydraulic draw bearing. And then we're gonna measure the distance of the face of the bell housing to the fingers of our clutch. 120. Subtract them. I'll the take here. one more out of them. Get in touch with your inner car. Inner touch. And fuck. Oh, no, it doesn't. Not that time. Me, me, me. Get me, muscles. There you go. That bush latte. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, you oh, broke no. Oh, no. It's stuck on. Ah, oh, sorry. It's just going to leak everywhere. Yep. Oh, ah. Damn it. Now we can do the clutch, too. All right. <laughs> I'll grab it. Uh, that was my spare. Uh, <laughs> uh, damn it. I don't know what I'm looking at. At least I kept the brake fluid from draining into my arm. Yes. Hydraulic, hydraulic draw bearings are great on the street. They're very comfortable, easy to drive. Hey, they're great in race cars too. They don't get stuck. But when they leak, or when you rip them off the transmission and the over with your extra strength comes out, yeah. When you use your beer muscles, using your beer uh, muscles, they leak. And why is that so tight? Up? Okay, we're gonna fix that. I think because it needed to have a little, a little lube on there. So now you have some extra lube. Just put it on there. <laughs> yeah, it won't, yeah, it won't, yeah. It won't do that the next time. This is the sleeve that sits on the adapter that holds to the trans. The hydraulic throw bearing slides on the sleeve. It has two O-rings in it. And when you step on the pedal, fluid goes into the cavity, expands, and this slides forward and backward on that sleeve. Well, the sleeve got stuck, and uh, Bob Ross, the clutch guy, Making happy trees sometimes, but not happy clutches today because that thing just came apart. I don't think the O-rings are wasted, so I think we could just put this back together. Mm. All right, so the surface of this is not great, so we're just gonna, gonna sand it a little bit. What grade you got? So we're gonna start with a little 400. And you should work. And we'll probably end up finishing with like some six or some eight. All right. And what we're going to do is we're going to hit it in four different quadrants. And that should get it pretty even. Away from you. Take a little bit of time so I don't oblong it. Not that it really matters with this, but we're gonna do it. Might as well try to do it right. Says the guy who uses beer muscles to destroy said hydraulic bearing, but he can't. Clutches in, trans is in, new throttle bearings in. Time to bleed the hydraulic system for our hydraulic throttle bearing. This process is pretty simple. Fill up the reservoir, the bleeder line. You can just dunk into this bottle. 
And if you put the end of the hose below the level of the brake fluid, when you stroke the pedal and release it, it won't inhale any air and it will bleed much faster. Otherwise, you can just crack open the bleeder line and let it gravity bleed for a while. That takes too long. So if you stick that hose in here, I can work the pedal. One down. All right, I'm holding it. Yeah, I was gonna ask if that would need to be plugged back in or not. Yeah, that's the reverse lockout solenoid. Okay, yeah, that's the one down. We like that. If you don't hook that up, you gotta really wail on this thing to get it to go into reverse. Oh, really? That's wired up to the brake pedal, so when you step on the brake, it energizes the solenoid, and then it'll, it'll allow it to go in reverse much easier. All right, Blasphemy's got a new clutch in it, but uh, before it can be broken in and put back on the dyno, as you can see, we need to narrow the rear end. It's uh, sticking out a little bit too far and causing smoke on the fender wells instead of on the tires. So we're here with Eric Yost. Trying to take a little of the Joe dirt out of it, so we'll get him stuck up under there a little better. <laughs> get it, uh, get it fit. It should be no problem. We can, I think we got plenty of spline on the axle. We can cut it, uh, and no, uh, no issue at all. So that's all the right. plan anyway. All right. How long do you think our day's going to be? Oh, a couple hours. A couple hours. No <laughs> problem. We got this. All right. All right. Well, let's get to work. Well, you didn't like the wires hanging from the back of the car? Yeah. Well, when we took care of the week, you said something about doing it when we did the training, and I, I told him I'd take care of it and forgot all about it. Oh. We got, after the second time when the freaking train had to come back out. <laughs> that was preoccupied with that, bro. So, Eric, how long have you been building race cars? <laughs> For a while. For a while? I cut the floor pans out of my car when I was 13 with a stick welder. What? With a stick welder. You I cut them out? With I the cut them out with a stick welder. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so it's been a while just doing stuff and then uh you know I wanted to I wanted to drive my my Camaro uh before I graduated and I worked at a body shop in high school and uh was able to drive it two weeks before I graduated. Uh so basically right out of high school I went into uh NASCAR. Um, oh, really? yeah. yeah, so I wanted to do that for a while, and it you can learn a lot. I mean, I super nice fab shops and equipment. And, um, you know, a lot of the guys are really good. Um, so I did that for 15 years, but I built the shop here uh, 20, 24 years now. I've been had this shop, but I'll do nights and weekends to work the cup team, but then. Uh, went full time probably about nine years ago. Oh, okay. So, so um, yeah, I mean, land speed, dragon. Twenty four years. You don't look that old, Eric. Right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, that'll come on a drag strip now. So that <laughs> <laughs> yeah. that'll knock that off really quick. All right, we got the housing out. Um, pretty straightforward. Uh, we can measure. Uh, this is center pinion. So our, our jig here uh, is center of the pinion, and we can measure the offset if there's any pinion offset in the car. But basically, we're taking the same amount off each side. Uh, so everything bracket-wise, everything is going to be the same. Um, so we measured an inch and a half is going to be what we need on each side, so three inches narrower. Um, we're going to cut the ends off on the weld, cut a little further ahead, but machine it down at the weld so we can reuse the ends um, and take our inch and a half off and uh, uh, buzz it back together and should be straightforward. Um, so I've got plates that go on the ends here and they bolt flat to the end of the, the housing end and it'll actually, you can measure corner to corners. So if we wanted to put any toe or camber in the housing end, we can. Uh, but for this deal, for the drag race deal, street deal, we're gonna have them straight up. So um, 
straight parallel with each other, straight uh, everything. So no, no toe, no camber. Um, but we had the ability to do that with with our other fixture and stuff. So, uh, but th this so this is, this is this is not for drag racing. It's not really this more circle car or any stuff like that. More circle track stuff, but you can really dial them in if you want to really check to make sure they are dead straight. This is a really accurate way because it measures them way far out on the four corners, and you can X them and uh, really four corner it and really see how how straight and true it is. Such a cool tool. It's 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 amazing, like all the little features of things like that that go into something like that to make a yeah. car go in a circle or, or make a car go straight or make it drift in a corner. You oh, know? It is insane the amount they spend on that kind of stuff too. Yeah. Yep, so we'll, we'll bevel it back on the lathe so it'll bevel back, take all the original weld out of it. You know, bevel it down, bevel this, so it'll be a, a good weld we can put back in. <clears throat> and this is a deal we figured out a, a while back. It's kind of a cheater way of uh, making it nice and true. Is a good hose, hose clamp. Hose clamp. <laughs> <laughs> High dollar tools. Yep. But it, it trues itself up and uh, it, it works works really good. Instead of trying to, to guess. So we'll cut probably here, leave us a quarter inch to machine, uh, and then cut there, bevel it, put it in a fixture, weld it up. We'll have this all back together in like an hour. We're doing burnouts out front. Oh yeah. All right. Oh yeah. <laughs> and then the axles, we got lucky on that. <clears throat> you can see where they were, uh, they were riding at previously. And if we cut inch and a half off, that gives us plenty of spline left. So. Uh, we should be golden. Then I'll put the bevel back in it, so we'll have the same amount of weld. Now, how do you do this on the other on the other side? So we have to grind it by hand. Um, this is not that critical. You got to get it. Uh, we don't go all the way down to where it's um, still be two to two, but it'll be like eight inch thick there at the end, and it'll go all the way out to all of this. Finished product before it gets rerouted to the new cut rear end. So basically, we got bushings in here that uh, hold this inch and a quarter solid bar. Uh, so that is straight and true with the center line of axle, uh, center line of center section. So everything is is dead steady off of that. Uh, these bushings line up on that. Basically, we got that, and we uh, level that, level this, weld it up, and tack it in four spots, weld it in four spots, so it's kind of uh, keep from drawing, uh, keep it where we still can turn, turn this, and keep it nice and true, um, and should be good to go. That you and you one side at a time. Usually, the housings we do are shorter than these. So uh, we're, we're about, if I went to there, it's right there. So it's almost there. It's almost making it, but it's, it doesn't really matter. I mean, you're, you're still, you're still going off of, you know, both sides of that and keeping it straight. So it's not a, not that big of a deal. Pretty close to 51 and a half. All right. Yeah. Nail it. You're good to go. 54 and a half to 51 and a half. So three. 54 and a half to 51 and a half. Yep. Three inches, inch and a half on each side. That'll clear it. That'll be about perfect. Yep. Yep.
So what's the process of uh, shortening these down? So these things are super, super hard. <clears throat> I've got like three or four saws over here. None of them will touch it. Um, it'll it'll break every saw blade off, you know, off of that. So uh, basically a chop saw or a cutoff wheel is the only way to get through them. Okay. Um, so we'll cut off wheel it and grind it smooth and uh, put the taper back on it and be good to go. Now we're gonna do, you're gonna take an inch and a half off of both of these ends yep. too? Yeah, so you see how much engagement they had before. All right. Um, so it's inch and a quarter of engagement. A rule of thumb is whatever distance, thickness it is, that's how much engagement you know you would, you would like to have. So uh, we got plenty, uh, so I can, I can take that off and be, be good to go. So you're saying whatever the thickness or diameter of the axle is, yep. you want that much engagement? It's a rule of thumb, but some of them's even less than that. Like, oh, okay. uh, yeah, we've had some, like, um, like a set of strange axles, and it was like seven eighths of an inch engagement. And they're like, that's fine, <laughs> good to go. It's like, all righty, you know. But they, they, you know, they say it's just whenever it's that big, you'll you'll break it here before you'll you'll before strip you the, spines. the spines. Yep. Interesting. Yeah. That's wild. You would think that this part here, right. like this would break first. Yep, yep. The ones that I've broke has always been, you know, out in this area. Oh. Never even on this end. Like uh, I broke some 35 splines in my Camaro, and uh, they were, it just shattered it like right in here. Just, it like split it into 45. Interesting. Yep. I wonder why that is. Well, don't know. I imagine, I mean, some of the machine, I don't know if it's a, um, a stress mark where the where the the end of the, where they broach it and everything. Right. Um, I don't know. You know the gun drilled axles. You can do a thirty five spline or a forty spline gun drilled axle, um, and you have two surface areas. So you have surface area on the outside oh. and surface area on the inside. So they're actually stronger than a solid. The yeah. gun drills are. Mm -hmm. Yep. So they're lighter That's and stronger. So yeah. Yeah. Take a material out up to a certain point. So you have. Right. Um, just like a piece of tubing versus a piece of solid. If you have a piece of solid three eighths, you could bend. But if it was three eighths tubing, it'd be a lot stronger because you're fighting two surface areas. All right, well, let me get you cutting. Yeah.